Hello everyone. Look, I'm a minute early this morning. I see lots of you are tuning in already. This is great. Um, first off, I need to ask your forgiveness. Oh, and by the way, you're getting to see in that corner over there, that is the spaghetti mess that Mr. Producer uses when we're doing our live and unscripted episodes. This is still set up from the last episode, which we did on Friday because I was doing some other recording over the weekend. I'll even let you see a little more of it. Look at that. That's why I hire him. Hire, wink, wink. Uh, because it is it is a process, the live streaming that we do. And so that's the kind of stuff that he does is organizing all those wires and hard drives and routers and all the things. So anyway, um, but I was going to say, I've been on uh, live every day in the month of April, except for the 30th, the last day I fell down on the job. Yesterday was Sunday. And so, you know, we did church in the morning and then we went out for lunch with some family and then we had friends over in the evening and about eight o'clock last night, I realized, oh my goodness, I never did go live today. And many of you are more Easterly of me. So it was even later. So I thought, oh, well, I'm just going to do it on the 1st of May. So here we are. So let's see who's chiming in. Kathy, this is a good one, an old grandmother's flower garden quilt she has. It looks like it was basted together with an old flannel sheet. Yep, I've done that before. Rebecca, happy Monday. Lynn, welcome to May. Patsy, nice to be here from sunny Florida. Kathy is in Utica, Michigan. And Sandra, good morning. Janice, Arizona warmth finally. Linda, hi from shivery cold, Missouri. Sherry, good morning. <clears throat> Excuse me. Sue Sows, Aaron Potts in Ohio. Luda in Connecticut. Awesome. So let me quickly introduce myself. I'm Susan Smith. You're in my studio, Stitched by Susan. I'm a professional long arm quilter and sometime YouTuber. So again, that the little spaghetti mask desk you're seeing over there in the corner is our live streaming setup. Um, and we live streamed a quilt on Friday, the quilting of a project. And it happened to be a vintage quilt. So this particular quilt belonged to Janet Nesbitt of One Sister Designs, and I live fairly close to her. So she asked me if I would finish this quilt for her. Um, it was a top that her great-grandmother pieced prior to her death in 1934, I believe it was. And so it had some age on it, and Janet's kept it all these years, thinking at some point she might get it hand-quilted, and it just wasn't happening. So she asked me to quilt it, and it was all made of hexes, but not in the grandmother's flower garden style. It was more a trip around the world style where each fabric, you know, made a complete circuit of the quilt. So, and it had a little bit of, of irregularities in terms of not perfectly flat. It was hand pieced entirely, eighth inch seams entirely. So I loaded it up on Friday and the live stream was the quilting of that project. And I chose to use an all over feather design because A, it's, it's quite traditional in appearance. So it suits the age and vintage of the quilt, uh, very thirties type fabrics. Um, um, what's the word I want? Feed sack type fabrics in that quilt. And then to the all over feather, because it's fairly small and because it's got lots of curves that is good at pulling in excess fabric when you need to manage stuff like that. So that was the quilting design I chose. You can check that out online if you want to see it. It's it's on my YouTube channel too. And I think it's called, it's got vintage in the title. I can't even remember right now. But also below what where we're talking now in the notes, I've got a link for a free class for that quilting design. So if you like feathers and you want to learn how to do the all over ones, um, there is no spine in the feathers. You're just quilting the plume. So you can literally move freely around the quilt top. Have a free class for that, and I've put the link in the show notes. But today's topic is a little bit different. I thought it would be fun to talk about uh, vintage quilt tops, or was it Kathy that said you've got one that's got a flannel sheet? That was someone else. I'm sorry, I can't remember the name, but that's been finished with a flannel sheet between it. You want to take it apart and re-quilt it. And, and lots of us have unfinished tops that have never been finished, and they can be intimidating. That's why I entitled this, Don't Be Scared. Because um, so many people say to me, ah, I've got all these tops waiting and I don't know what to do with them and I, I, I'm afraid of wrecking them and they're such treasures. Here's my viewpoint. You know, form your own, but here's my viewpoint. Someone started these quilts umpteen years ago, put love and time into them and for whatever reason didn't get them fully finished. Any way that I choose to finish them and give them a new lease on life and let them be used and loved is a good way. So I'm going to show you a couple of my treasures today. And the first one I'm going to show you is the very first vintage quilt top that I ever quilted. 
and it was about, I don't know, a year and a half into my long arm quilting journey, not all that long. And you'll see the detail in the quilting. There's the border of it. Let me get up some more. That nice window side light is great for seeing quilting, isn't it? You can see that I did quite detailed quilting on it, crazy, and I really didn't know how to do that in-depth custom quilting at that point, and I bit off more than I could chew. But you know what? I've never regretted it. I learned a ton while doing this quilt, and it was really fun, and the, the process was so rewarding, and the result was so great. It was part of actually a challenge in our local machine quilting guild. So everyone was doing vintage quilt tops of various ages and in various states of you know cleanliness or repair um, so that was quite fun there were about 14 of us that year that did different vintage tops so this one is named Audrey if you go back in my social media feeds over time here and there you'll see pictures of Audrey because it is one of my favorite all-time quilts ever so if you want to see the whole thing but the point I wanted to make this morning too is I do not think it is necessary or even desirable to think that you've got to quilt a vintage top with that kind of depth and detail. I did it because it was a challenge, because there were things I wanted to learn. Um, the, it, the project just appealed to me at that point in time and I was willing to invest all those hours in custom quilting it. But my original point, which was any way that you finish a vintage quilt and allow it to be used and loved is honoring the person who initially made it, who initially had the idea. And it's a good thing. So, you know, Friday's live streaming that I did with Janet's quilt, this is the point that she came to too. She had always thought she would hand quilt it because that would carry on the hand stitched theme, but she was finding years are going by and I'm not getting it hand quilted and it's not displayed, it's not used, nobody gets to appreciate it, it's just folded in a closet. So she finally decided to have me machine quilt it because at least now it's going to be a beautiful finished quilt. So, you know, if you're if you're a hand quilter and think that's sacrilege, I'm I'm sorry, but that's just my viewpoint. If you can finish it and love it, you should do it. So let me show you a couple others that I have. I know this isn't the best way to do a trunk show, but it's what you got today. This one, also fully hand pieced. So it's got the larger hexes. I would say they're about an inch and a quarter, maybe even an inch and a half, the one side of each hexie, and then the little muslin diamonds in between. This top was given to me by a friend. Um, and I, I kept it for a year or two as well, thinking, you know, should I be custom quilting this? Should I be doing something in every hexie? Like, what should I do with this quilt? But I knew that I wanted this to be a quilt that my family used and loved. I do not know who made it. it. It does not have a story that has come down with it. So it's just a quilt top. I know it's vintage. I love vintage things. So I decided to, you can kind of see the quilting. I just quilted point to point arcs on all the seams. So basically edge to edge quilting. It's not super fussy. And the other thing with this one was the intersections of the seams were not terribly accurate, so there wasn't really a point in many cases at which they intersect. They were an eighth or even a quarter of an inch off. So this idea of just quilting point to point, I just picked a point and made my arcs and got it quilted. If I was trying to custom quilt that, that would have been frustrating because what do I line up my lines with, right? When there's nothing accurate to line them up with. But now when it's finished and quilted, Nobody sees those inaccuracies. Of course they don't, nobody cares. But why go through the frustration of trying to quilt something that's not precise enough really to lend itself to custom quilting? So this lives in a basket at the end of my couch. We use it all the time. Here's another one. This too was a top that the story has not survived with and so I don't, I don't know its backstory at all, but I love it. This quilt opened my eyes to color combinations. This tealy green and red is not two colors I would have ever picked out of my stash and said, oh, hey, let's put these together. But it makes a striking quilt and it is postage stamp. The little squares are an inch and a quarter finished. Let me step back a bit so that you can see a bit more of the design. So that gives you a bigger picture view. Isn't it pretty? So this quilt again, you saw that it had the bigger green areas, right? And my initial 
reaction looking at it was, I've got a custom quilt that I've got these big green squares. They're eight or nine inches. I could do something really dramatic in there. Thought about that for a while. The thing with this quilt, again, hand pieced, um, much of the edges are on bias. All the cream colored edges and green edges are on bias and it's kind of a fragile fabric. So it was very wonky as to shape and it just could be manipulated in so many ways. And the fabric was fairly thin and fairly fragile. So my thinking went like this. If I custom quilt, for example, the green squares, and if I stitch in the ditch around them, or if I anchor points on those seam allowances, that fabric already being fragile and then having stitching fall on those seam allowances, I don't know if this quilt literally can stand up to it. So I, again, chose to do an edge to edge quilting design. Can you see that? It's kind of feathery too, a little bit traditional in look because literally the quilting is what's holding the whole thing together and stabilizing the whole thing. So I manipulated those bias edges till I got it square on my quilting frame and I just quilted it from one edge to the other so it's all secure. Um, I was lucky enough to find a Bonnie and Camille batting, I mean, backing. Isn't that just the perfect tealy color? So yeah, just quilted those layers together and this quilt too lives in the same basket at the end of my couch and we use it all the time. So this is what I've kind of come to with my vintage tops. When I feel like it, when I've got a beautiful one, then I custom quilt it. If that gives me pleasure, if there's a technique I wanna try or a particular look I want to achieve, great. But if not, or if the fabrics are fragile, or if maybe there's even some holes or mends that I have to do with muslin or interfacing or whatever, then I just choose to edge to edge quilt it and get it done. Even if I don't think it will last for another hundred years, at this point, that's not my concern, especially with the quilts where I don't, I don't know their story. I'm not trying to preserve my great grandmother's stitches. I'm just trying to let these quilts be used and loved, which I think was their initial intention anyways. So that's my thoughts on vintage quilts. And now I'm going to scroll back and read your thoughts because you all have been typing in and I have not been reading them. So let's see. Lots of the good mornings, Donna in Boston. Linda, I have a dozen of my great aunt's tops hoping to be finished, awesome. Kentucky, Upper Michigan, California, Kamloops, hottest place in Canada yesterday, really? And light rain today, that's nice. Hi from Holland, awesome. Angela just finished two vintage hexagon quilts of my grandmother's, there are three more to do. Planning to share them with my siblings. So glad I found five of them. Yes, such a treasure, such a treasure. Sandra says gorgeous, Petra from Austria. Erin, very pretty. Janice, I talked to a lady who gives value to quilts and she said what you do. She said, finish it however you can, it still has value. It has value and it gets to be loved and enjoyed. Linda, how do you deal with really wonky seams from the back side of the quilt, press not in the same direction? I think a given block. Um, mostly with the vintage ones, if it looks possible to get the seams pressed properly, then I might try it. But most of the time when they're hand stitched or when they have, you know, Y type seams that don't easily, you know, decide which way to go, I don't even worry about it. I just layer it and quilt it. And again, edge to edge helps with that. It doesn't matter to you then which way the seam allowances go or if they flip flop in the back. Frankly, I don't worry about it. I just quilt them, my opinion. Uh, oh, Linda, within a given block, I meant. I think I answered that, that you know, same thing holds true. Um, if you're custom quilting, you know, it might matter to you a little more where those seams go. Cassandra, I'm the first quilter in my family. I plan to rescue some vintage tops from eBay. Absolutely. That's how I got started. They're a little harder to find than they used to be because I think a lot of people see the value in them, um, but they're out there. And sometimes you find them at garage sales and estate sales and in the most astonishing places. My best bargain so far is a $10 Lone Star top. And I quilted it and gave it away. It was a lovely gift. Kay, I just got three vintage tops donated to our quilt guild. Wonky, loose seams, frayed edges. I figured done is gonna be better than perfect. Yes, exactly. 
And Kathy Ray, I have one to finish. Bought it on a trip to Wisconsin, all applique. I bought the backing and need to get her done. Yes, so I have not shown any applique quilts and I personally am not an appliqueer, so that's typically not the tops that I'm drawn to. So you might have a different thought process on applique in terms of what type of quilting you're willing to do over the top of it. All my vintage ones are pieced. So I frankly have no problem just quilting over the whole thing with an edge to edge design. So. That's my thoughts on vintage quilts, and I'm happy to hear yours too. I think we're basically in agreement. Done is better than perfect, and used and loved is better than sitting folded in a shelf closet somewhere where no one gets to see them, right? So I think that's it for today. Um, this is the 1st of May, as I mentioned earlier. So it's the end of my live daily chats for a while. I will probably do this again. It's been really fun meeting up with you here each day. So like and subscribe to the channel. And if you click on the little bell, you'll get notifications whenever I am live as well. So all these April chats I have tucked into the playlist that's called Bite Size Tips. I know not all of them are tips, they're just chats, but it seemed a good way to organize them so that you can find them if you ever want to go back and watch them later. So look for the playlist Bite Size Tips. And I think that's it for today. Whatever you are doing today, I hope you enjoy it thoroughly. I'm off to take a little walk in the sunshine because we have a gorgeous day today. So talk to you soon.